I do want to get into the Rangers thing because it is important. The New York Rangers hurt the NHL's feelings, and the NHL has the right to find the New York Rangers. Now, when you're a billionaire, it's the equivalent of getting a $5,000 fine. Tom Wilson was fined $5,000. The average, based on what Tom Wilson makes, it would cost him about $66 Canadian. That's that's the based on the average salary. So it's uh, nothing, not that's a fine. The players. That's the players. That's the, and the collective and you know bargaining what? agreement. Smart move by the players to do that. You know, make them, you know, force them to actually suspend you. And it makes it, you know, then there's like an appeals process and all that stuff. Um, for James Dolan, who is the, is the, shall we say, unpredictable owner of the Rangers and Knicks. Eccentric. Is that fair? Eccentric. Eccentric, yeah. Um, what the hell is sure. this? $250,000. Who cares? He's a billionaire. Yeah, even for the even for MSG that owns the Knicks and the Rangers, that's like the left leg of a fourth liner. Like, who cares? What if he just does what so many people have suggested? And I think we spoke about it yesterday, Adam. What if he just doesn't pay it? He goes, I'm James Dolan. You can't tell me shit. Well, he's the number he's the owner. He's the number one owner in the league. He owns like, the what, number one franchise, you, so he's the number one owner. Do the Rangers not get to play? What are they going to do? We're not making the playoffs anyway. Fuck you. Like, I just... What I would love for the social experiment, I just want to see him not pay. I would just not I, pay. I'm He's gonna the kind of owner who would too. I'm gonna bet that that's written down somewhere in terms of clauses with teams and lots of things been, are written down anywhere. Yeah, but there there would be consequences that are written down. Like they would have thought of that forfeiture of draft picks. I would think probably something. What if the Rangers just jump up there during their time? Like, fuck you. We're picking anyway. Like <laughs> they give their pick away. It's like, no, um, I, I do think that the NHL, you know, a lot of people said this fine was going to be a lot more than it was. And obviously if you've been following hockey, you know, the Tom Wilson situation, we'll get to that part in a second. No, but I don't know the Tom Wilson situation. <laughs> the rules told me to forget everything every 18 months. I don't sure. know who that player is. So can we okay. hold off on that? Because I'm trying to make a just a quick point nope. here. Nope. <laughs> make your point. My point is, which I've sort of half forgotten, is the $250,000 fine to a lot of people, including myself, seemed low. And I mm -hmm. think there is a reason for that. And that is because the NHL recognizes that this is the most valuable franchise in the sport, money-wise. You know, you could claim that the Canadians or the Leafs or the Bruins or whatever have a, a brand that stretches further. I don't know. Like, I don't know how you measure that. I'm sure there are ways. But pretty tough to argue against the Rangers. And frankly, they're in New York. Of course, they're the most valuable franchise in the sport. And beyond that, um, you don't want to start a war with a guy who's eccentric. You don't want to do this. He, the NHL didn't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eugene Melnick. What do you think they're going to do against James Dolan? This should have been a million-dollar fine, guys. Uh -huh. This should have been a million dollars. There's no question. No, everybody, everybody I talk to, everybody I text message, people who know what they're talking about, it's a million dollars, it's a million dollars, it's a million dollars. The NHL did not want to start a war because they've had enough bad press, although I'm not sure they view it that way. This would look really rinky-dink if they did. Well, so, everyone watched the game, didn't they? Oh, I watched it. Hmm? Everyone watched the game. Well, if it's so bad, why would everyone watch the game? Have we it's shifted my... over to that now? No, I don't know. In, we're not getting well, that's into that. That's okay, you tell me what we're doing because there are a <laughs> we're thousand about I, wanna, I, I would like you to respond to <laughs> what I just stated. About I already the said NHL they should have got more than a mil. Or they should have got more than a quarter mil. Do you mil. agree with my point of view on that? Or do you yes, think? No, of course I do. Of okay. course I do. And there the NHL go. doesn't want to start a war. There it because is. They'll they'll lose it. It's the Rangers. You need them. You, you got do. you got an agreement coming up with ESPN. Well, not an agreement coming up. It's beginning, right? Mm -hmm. And you want it to go well. And like he's he's wild enough to emotionally fire Jeff Gordon and John Davidson. Um, and that's that's a hundred percent what he did. It's a hundred percent what he did. This, please stop lying to us. <laughs> the no. Even Brooksy today, I read his column. I was like. Even Brooks is like, oh no, that had nothing to do with it. Dolan wants them to the rebuild Come to be on. over now. You're a liar. You're a liar. Uh, like, well, I I don't think he's a liar. I, or I don't think any of the insiders are a liar. I do think they are regurgitating what they're told. I do believe that Dolan was probably unhappy. Okay, listen, if you're unhappy with the way the Rangers are developing, yeah, no, you're emotional. 
you're being emotional about this. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. There are legitimate things to criticize. So have we moved on to management then? Sure, go ahead. There, there, there are legitimate things to criticize with the Rangers. They're spending a absolutely wild amount of money on players who are no longer playing for them. The Tony D'Angelo situation related to that was an utter fiasco. Not to mention that he played three games for them after signing an extension and they knew he was an asshole. Like they could not be surprised when the asshole began to act like an asshole. I, 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 so there are legitimate things to criticize, but for the love of God, Buchnevich, Kravtsov, Lafreniere, Kako, even though that's been a work in progress, the two-headed young monster that they have in Dent, getting Artemi Panarin, uh, Zabanajad, Adam, Adam Fox, for God's sake, is probably uh, in the Norris conversation. And he's going to lose it to Hedman and he's going to get robbed because he should have the Norris. Yeah, and like, it'll be because he didn't make the playoffs. Well, his name's not Victor Hedman. And that's, this, that's the only reason. Anyways. <laughs> but okay. And the Rangers are not tough enough is the criticism you're seeing. And Mark Messier was saying it. Oh, it's amazing. Boy. It's amazing how often the guys who played in a lawless era seem to think that the solution is people who play without laws. It's, well, it's they, simply amazing. But, but Steve, would you not agree that we are in a lawless era? Oh, a hundred percent. And, and this is the broader conversation that I guess we're going to get to, but also it, it's a problem that is probably more easily solved than firing your GM who helped rebuild this team from ash and your president who's been there for two years. He's been there for two years. You make a couple signings because you're the friggin Rangers and all of a sudden you don't have that problem anymore. They're not even the softest team in the league. They're just not as tough as the Caps, which I quickly realized at the beginning of last night's game. They're big. There were, uh, what was it, seven fights or six? Yeah. And none of them involves a Dano Chara who could literally kill a man. Like he's, that was a thing. Dano Ch- the guy pushing people to decide. It's Dano was scary in the playoffs. Zdeno Chara, Tom Wilson, who did fight. Mm-hmm. Um, Brendan Dillon is a problem too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ovechkin is enormous and will truck you, but he wasn't in that game. Uh, uh, Anthony Mantha, who would have loved to fight, but uh, got a little bit of his, and I'm sure we'll get to that in the thousand things that there are to get to. Th- that went as good as anybody with the Rangers or Caps or League could have hoped for. No one appears to be seriously hurt. Wilson yeah. did leave the game with an upper body injury. Um, I'll choose to believe them. I know a lot of people are rather skeptical about that. I did rewatch the fight. He punched Brendan Smith's helmet really, really, really. But you, hard. you take him out of that game to protect his well-being. Yes, one hundred percent. Everyone, everyone's. Yeah, you, he that's fought. His suspension. That's good. He's in there now. Bring him out. Here's his suspension. You got to sit two periods. You're down that's a it. man. Like that's it. Just let him sit. But not like for oh the players will settle it on the ice. The New York Rangers gave Tom Wilson a one game suspension. Yeah. They did. Except he got paid for it. And he got paid for it. Yeah, you're right. And he didn't yeah. forfeit. Yo, that. straight the up. The-, the best villains in the world always stack the deck in their favor. And Tom Wilson's a great villain. Um, he, he knows that the NHL won't do anything about the way he plays the game. And yeah. so, what Tom Wilson does that is genius and brilliant, and I have a ton of respect for it as a strategy is he makes you play his game. He, he, Tom Wilson doesn't need to play. I mean, Tom Wilson can. I mean, it, what, he's got 33 points. Like he's, a, he's a good player, very good player. But Tom Wilson makes you play to what Tom Wilson wants you to make. No one's no. making Tom Wilson play their game. I and disagree. that, and, and I, the, no, I mean, Steve, like, listen, he'll, he, he beat the, he punched Buchnevich in the head yeah. and, put, and grabbed Panarin's hair and threw him to the ice. And he and and Butch Navich is the one who's going to get a suspension no, today. No, I know, but I don't think he's a criminal mastermind. I think he's a bully who's enabled by the league. And this okay. doesn't mean he has to be a bad person off the ice. No, he's not. You know, you can send me every charity thing he's ever done, every puppy he's ever kissed. Great, good for him. Uh, you know, I listen. You can't do the things he does. Stop with the whataboutism. 
What about Crosby? What about, yeah, yeah. Let's have that conversation later. We're having this one. This is a repeat offender. He was given supplemental discipline and it didn't reflect the fact that he's a repeat offender. That's right. nonsense. And as for Pavel Buchnevich, he's going to get, I think, two games. We'll fucking see because this is George Peros's first uh, hearing since the team that Buchnevich played for uh, plays for ask for him to be fired. Oh yeah. So now there's, there's a there's a party that can judge something. Uh, you know, for, as a as a third party, uninterested party. Batman Bullshit. should absolutely. Batman should show some leadership and step in here and do it himself. Yeah. Yeah. You it, cannot. George, George should recruit. Recuse himself. Just pull yourself out of it. It's unreasonable to expect George Peros to be impartial here. All right. You, and, and I'm saying that in defense of George Peros. It's unreasonable to say he's going to be impartial here. Since yes, we're sure. talking about the fights, can we mm-hmm. talk about the part where people are defending the fights because it got people to watch? Like I was yes. when I was at work today, um, there's a guy who does the midday shows. His name is Miles. He's he's from uh, overseas. He's from England. And he doesn't watch hockey. And he and he asked me, hey, did you see the the all the fights in hockey last night? And I was like, yes, that's a, that's a hockey thing that happened because it brought in the casual audience that every entertainment source wants. Like if you're making entertainment, you want you don't just want the hardcores. You want casual people who aren't really invested to find find out about your product because then they may become invested and that's how you gain fans. So the NHL last night gained a whole bunch of casual audience because of violence and because they had all of these fights. Does that, which side of that did you guys fall on? Because that was a huge argument on Twitter last night of, Hey, is it good for the game because so many people are now watching or is it terrible because we don't want this? Well, first of all, uh, the the casual fan who's going to see that and then stick around, it does not exist. Uh, that's not that's not a person who exists in this world. Uh, that's a window shopper. That's a everyone. That's a rubbernecker. That's ever we've we've all sat next to that person in traffic. We've gone, you know what what the hell is the holdup up here? And it's a car pulled over uh, because of a flat tire or something and some asshole at the front of the line is holding up the entire region uh, because they have to look at this person and oh what kind of haircut do they have what what kind of car oh uh, how could i involve myself in this situation that person's never coming back they're never giving you their money nhl so knock it off with that second of all fights get people to watch forget the rangers forget the capitals let's let's pick a shitty game that no fan would want to watch the devils and sabers <laughs> outside of the devils and sabers, obviously. And it has to be on a, like a, a nondescript night, like a Tuesday, a devil's sabers night on a Tuesday, 9 PM start, 9 PM Why? start. <laughs> Cause it's got to suck shit. all the way through. Uh, everything about it has got to suck, but uh. new rule. Jeff Bezos bought the NHL (laughs) and he's lost his mind and he's decided new rules. And the first game with the new rules is this Tuesday night, 9 PM game between the devils and Sabres. And they no longer get to play with hockey sticks. They have to use rubber chickens. (laughs) Who's not watching that. (laughs) Who is not tuning into that? Please make it the noisy kind the dogs play with. Oh, here he comes. Sam Reinhardt with the slap shot. Like I would the love ones from TikTok. Yeah, yeah. It would lead ESPN. It would lead Sportsnet. It would lead TSN. It would lead every show in the morning. Everyone yeah. loves a freak show. If you told me kicking was allowed in the NHL, you can just Jesus. kick whoever the fuck you want. You can just kick them with skates on. No. Nope. Who's not tuning into that just to see the horror that is about to happen? <laughs> So don't, I might not watch that one. <laughs> that you could count Jesse, me out for that. You're absolutely yeah. watching that one. No. Yes, you are. Uh-uh. Yes, you wanna, are. Nope. Too you're, much blood. You're, you're not going to watch it for long, <laughs> but you are going to tune in to see the start of it. Okay. Like the everyone point. else did. Right. Okay. The point. So it's this does not sell your product. This doesn't keep people here. And it's the NHL's obsession with uh, uh, trying to woo people who will never be theirs. Never be theirs. They're there for the freak show. They're not there for the long haul. Fuck likes, give me loves. Those people don't love you, NHL. Stop it. 
Stop it. They don't love you. Do you if not I might, know? If, oh, if I might weigh in on the same question before we move on. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're, unless I was, you I was want. just going to follow up, but I, I'll, I'll ask it after your point. It'll be, okay. it'll be just as relevant. So here's the, here's to add on to what Steve is saying um, for, um, for the fights to have brought in a new audience that would stick around. Cause it, the NHL doesn't give a fuck about one night of good ratings. I can guarantee you that work. I've been working for major broadcasters for 15 years. One, one good ratings day is no, doesn't do anything for you. Absolutely nothing. You know why? Cause the inventory is already sold. You need to, sh- you sell on month, week long blocks, month long blocks, three month long blocks, year long blocks. Where are you in the trending sort of thing? Are you trending up? Are you trending down? What's the long-term thing? Because that's what advertisers are looking for. So no one gives a shit about a one game that has a pop in ratings. Trust me, no one cares. Beyond that, for, the, for, for the, the casual fan or somebody who's never watched before to stick around, the game would have actually had to be good. The game was awful. It meant nothing. The hockey was pretty fucking terrible. Oh, and that trick was cool. Hold on, I'm getting to that. The Oshi thing matters a little bit if they explain it a little more in the broadcast, which they did not. Uh, and B, uh, like they, they didn't at the beginning because obviously the focus wasn't on that and I can understand why he gets a hat trick that's emotional, it's amazing. But beyond that, like, okay, so there's that, there's that story and there's the fight story, but the hockey itself is what you're trying to sell people on. I want to watch the puck go this way and that way and this way and that way. Boy, does that keep me on the edge of my seat. And anybody that's been to a hockey game, any hockey fans, if you're listening to the show, you're a hardcore hockey fan because who seeks out a podcast about hockey? That's niche. And yet, and yet, none of the actual play was that good. It wasn't compelling. It wasn't exciting. It was I just sort of kept just, waiting for the next fight. Exactly. And you know, and by the way, hats off to TJ Oshie. We'll get to that in a second. Take that out of it for a moment because that really is its own story unto itself. The game sucked. If you want, to, if you want people to be sold on your product, I'm not even saying don't fight. I'm just saying a clown show ain't going to get them. It's not especially when you follow it up. It's like a one hit wonder in, in, in music. You got this great Lou Bega, Mambo number five. What's Lou Bega's second hit? Oh, that's right. He didn't have one and nobody stuck around. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, uh, like ain't, name any one hit wonder. Anyone? Uh, 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 it's hard for me. It's hard, because right? This is the internet and someone's going to be like, actually. Yeah. Well, no one stuck around for Lou Bega. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's that's the thing. It's that one, oh, that one hook. Oh, we got him now. No, you don't. You don't. Adam, you, you know how many, how, how many hits Lou Vega had? How many hits did Lou Vega? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was good. Sorry. Oh, that was terrible. Oh, that's terrible. Down. All right, everyone can turn the show off. I'm turning red. The point, the point I'm trying to make is if you want to hook people, hook them with a product that's consistently good and consistently consistent, as in fans know what to expect. We just don't. 